Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is many a Truder, welcome back to Stellaris for our continued adventures in the brand new expansion, Overlord. Coming out later this week, but I've got my hands on it just a little bit early. And a reminder, this is still a sponsored video. And oh, they sent two checks this time, it was brilliant. And last time, oh my goodness, things went very well indeed. We set ourselves up as one of the brand new scientific vassals, the Scalarium, and as a result, our science has rocketed ahead of everybody else in the galaxy. Now, some people have pointed out our home world is now a barren wasteland with toxic oceans, and also a major city did fall in a volcano that one time. And to that I reply, yes, but we built a giant ring around our planet, which looks really cool. So honestly, it was worth it. But sadly there was a bit of an argument at our boss's headquarters, and now his empire has fallen apart into tiny, tiny pieces. Those pieces have immediately all gone to war with each other. Meanwhile, all the former vassals have decided to hang about, what if I was the new overlord? So yes, I suspect things are about to get, um, messy. But hey, you say crisis, I say opportunity. Because now these guys are falling apart, looks to me like I'm the biggest empire standing. And I think some of the other vassals know too, because they've immediately started desperately sending me non-aggression packs. Okay guys, I'm not planning to attack you imminently, but neither am I tying my hands behind my back. The downside is, yeah, my empire's entire shape has just changed dramatically. I'm no longer a Scalarium. That's just gone. Fallen apart, never coming back. That means all the bonus science I was getting from that, and indeed from the subsidy I negotiated with my overlord, that's gone. My science is really, really far ahead of basically everyone around me, but now it's going to slow down a bit. But on the other hand, my naval capacity just went through the roof because my fleet limits have been removed, and all my ships are now much cheaper than they used to be. In short, I can now build a really, really nice fleet. And when I say a really nice fleet, oh, I mean a really, really nice fleet, because I've already banked a lot of technology. So step one, probably best see what happens with, yes, the Wasserian Civil War, because don't forget, these guys may have just splintered but their fleets haven't ceased to exist. You can see them right there down the bottom, just heading home after my war. I don't know whether the other splinter states also have big fleets, so no need to cause trouble with them just yet. While that's happening, keep an eye on this, because some of these guys actually like me quite a lot. You there, you're friendly. You down over here, you're friendly too. Starting to disappear these days, because I did just kind of turn down the non-aggression pact, but yeah, we need to see whether maybe some of these people would be willing to sign up with me straight away, because uh, let's just say if I was this guy or this guy sitting in my single territory, and you know, this over here was next door to me, I might just decide peacefully that that's who I was going to side with. Because this here is the three ways that we can put together our own vassal empire. Number one, some people might come to us. Why? Because we're bigger, stronger, we've got more advanced tech, they might simply seek out our protection. Number two, of course, the classic. Nothing to stop me just declaring a war and saying, hey, you're about to become a tributary, or hey, you're about to become a vassal. Which feeds into a brand new policy, subjugation war terms. So now I can actually choose what my default contract is going to be. An oppressive contract, very much in my favour. However, it's going to cause trouble with, you know, revolting over time. A balanced contract or a really, really nice one. And the third and final method is perhaps the most interesting. We go out into the world and use the new contract system to negotiate. Because, don't forget... I've got a bit of an ace up my sleeve. And that's the Protectorate, a very specific vassal type that exists for situations where a subject empire has significantly weaker technology than their overlord, meaning as long as they're in that relationship, 
they gain a boost to all technology the Overlord already possesses. So, if you've got ridiculously strong technology versus all your neighbours, and I do, then they might potentially be rather interested in becoming your protectorate. Because basically, for them, it's a free ticket to technological advancement ludicrously fast. So basically, not only am I a technological powerhouse, I can handpick a bunch of empires around me and turn them into the same. Which led me to a rather interesting revelation, which is... These guys up north, the very friendly, super chill praying mantis monsters. They're doing pretty well right now. They've got a fleet of a similar size to ours, economy comparable. However, their technology is absolutely pathetic, meaning there might be a deal to be done here. Now you might be thinking, okay, they'll gain some technology, but would they really give up their freedom for that? And the answer is yes, because under the new contract system, the contract could be ludicrously in their favour. In fact, just by default, they are happy to become my protectorate, because the benefit of gaining that much scientific knowledge so fast is so in their favour. However, if I try and, you know, mess around with the contract a bit, like saying, hey, you know what, I have the right to integrate you. Do that, boom, now they won't accept it. But okay, what if I was willing to bribe them by, say, tossing a subsidy in their direction, giving them access to a huge amount of, yes, science and basic resources? Then they might be willing to go for it. Now, under certain circumstances, that might be worth doing. Honestly, under this one, I'm happy just to have them as a vassal. I don't want to integrate them. So I just need to figure out what the right option is. So I'm willing to give them some positives. Like, for example independent diplomacy. The only difference between that and restricted voting being when the galactic community shows up, they'll be able to vote however they want. Now, the war structure. That's where it gets a bit more difficult. I wouldn't mind having them on, yes, defensive duties. And they're willing to accept that because I've just given them a positive thing up there. At the moment, holding limit would be zero. I wouldn't mind at all. They don't want me to build buildings on their home world. Which I guess is kind of fair, yes. But if I give them unified sensors, they're back on board. They can still do their own diplomacy, fight their own wars, expand freely, vote freely. But they're willing to do this deal anyway because, I mean, to be honest, it's really in their favour. They're not paying me any tax whatsoever. In fact, yeah, if I try and tax them at all, they absolutely despise it. They will never accept it. Oh, go on, guys. Why not? Welcome aboard. And there we go. The Nerd Foundation has its first vassal, officially a protectorate on this occasion. Now, loyalty starts off a tiny bit low because you know what? They're still getting used to this whole business. However, it's ticking up five a month. Why? Because it's a very, very generous contract as far as they're concerned. Still, I did negotiate one thing I'm rather glad about, which is, uh, yes, holdings. I get to build a building. So, okay, what have we got available to us? Because these are all brand new. So, okay, if you want to be benevolent, you can do it. Build an aid agency. That's going to absorb energy and food from my side. However, it's going to generate loyalty change on their side. With brand new jobs, producing amenities for the subject. And I unity for the overlord. So okay, I'd be trading food and energy for unity. Honestly, that's not a bad deal for me either, actually. And there are a lot of these, by the way, though some are restricted to, yes, particular types of uh, vassal. So Ministry of Science is only for Scalariums, for example. And it kind of reinforces the fact you're using the vassal as a, a research group. Because, uh, yeah, you build this building, then the Overlord modifier is bonus to research speed. Ah, yes, and there's the uh, Ministry of Truth that used to exist back on my planet. This one is uh, kind of a nightmare, but... I won't deny, it's also one of the uh, most interesting, which is uh, influence is hard to get these days. So uh, bear in mind, that doesn't even lower loyalty or anything. It just basically, yeah, costs two unity. And it's their unity, so that feels uh, like really, really evil. Oh, you see, now this one, this feels much less evil. Satellite campus, I'm just basically building a university on your world. So their consumer goods get converted into a small amount of science for them, 
and much more science for me. That is fine. Okay, they can't be too upset by that. Let's go. Get it done. Oh, and here we go. I suspected this one might be coming. And uh, the Barntorians, that was... Uh, that was you, wasn't it? So, uh, hang about. You with the... Oh, hang on. Were you the guys we have the... You're the guys we've still got a research agreement with. Okay, we probably should cancel that, by the way. I feel like we're probably technologically ahead of you at this point. So, I mean, we could welcome them on board. Apparently, they're going to bring a big pile of signs with them. So, you're more than welcome. There we go. Empire number two joins up. And, once again, they've got themselves a decent-sized little fleet. Not spectacular, but better than nothing. The downside is, yeah, their loyalty is actually ticking up a bit more slowly because... Oh, hello. Divided patronage. Aha. If you've got too many vassals, then they're not so happy because their attention ends up being divided. You see, this is why I might want to let the Space Holy Roman Empire just sort out its own problems. Because if they would like to put themselves back together into a somewhat coherent whole, at that point, we could subjugate them. Also, in all the excitement of my boss exploding, I have been letting my eyes off the prize a little bit when it comes to day-to-day uh, -day empire management. Got to keep an eye on, yes, other various bits and pieces, such as, but not limited to, wormholes not being explored, I even have the technology for that ready to go, and indeed, yes, right on the border with the robots down south, by a baffling coincidence, a second Gaia world. So 100% get that underway. Marvellous. Because this one, this one isn't even a mysterious doom world where there's probably evil shadow people. Like, this one's actually fine. You see, after that whole business with that city that fell in the volcano back on the home world, this will just really reassure people, I think. All right, buddy. In you go. Let's see where you end up. And... Okay, literally just... Over. Uh oh. Corrupted avatar, psionic entity, creature of the shroud, uh, military power, a skull. Okay, is the psionic monstrosity actually coming at me? It doesn't appear to be. Okay. Um, just stay calm. Go and give the, yes, planet a survey. Don't go like too far in this direction. Or anything. Just, you know, survey it slowly, bit by bit. There's also a mysterious tanker. Don't really know what's going on there. Oh, now you see, this might be worth it all by itself. Which is that mysterious tanker. Neural tissue engineering. I cannot remember what that does, but apparently we can start researching it. Oh, leader experience gain and leader level cap up. Every flipping time. And yeah, straight away, everybody has started to chill out significantly. We're already up to, yes, a very positive uh, loyalty, bearing in mind, uh, well, 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 well. Let's just say, obviously, we needed to offer them a, a really generous contract so they would sign up. Because really, it's barely vassalage at all. We're not really slaves in the slightest. It's just a defensive pact. But um, now they're actually in the contract and kind of locked in... I can start using my influence to change the terms of the contract. And as long as I don't change it so much I completely knack a loyalty, they're kind of stuck in it because it's a legally binding document. Ah, yes, and that reminds me of something. I've been keeping uh, a little something in my back pocket, actually. So, 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 so. We were just discussing the problems of divided patronage, where everyone's getting a bit annoyed at me because I've got more than one vassal. Well, there are solutions to this. Feudal society has now adjusted to suit this new system. So if you've got that, no penalties from having multiple subjects. Brilliant. If you want to play a vassal game, absolutely huge. Although it does place restrictions on what you can and can't put in contracts. But there's an easier way, because yes, I saved up the ascension perk we got from completing expansion. Say hello to the new form of shared destiny, and I'd say this is actually, yes, in probably its strongest ever form. Diplomats plus two, brilliant. But same deal again, subjects don't suffer monthly loyalty penalties from having multiple subjects. Though, obviously, if you do take the feudal civic, it does free up an ascension perk for something else. 
Now at this point, to be honest, it's mainly just a question of figuring out how much you're willing to pay to get someone into the stable. So say, these lovely robots who we were beating up last week just for fun, we can probably get them on board. The downside of course is they don't really like us because that whole we blew you up thing. However, if I give them the, there we go, if I give them the most generous possible starting contract, they're willing to go for it. Just, even though they are a bit wary and as the Empire gets bigger, yes, they're more resistant to working for somebody else. But I don't get anything out of that whatsoever. And if they start a war, I have to go and assist. It's not a vote, I am just bound by contract to help in that war. So, on this occasion, I just don't think the deal is worth it. Alright, because all I'm getting is a tiny amount of influence. Oh, and hello, sexy. Guess who just showed up? Why, it's the galactic community. And uh, yes, indeed, all of a sudden, one of those terms of the contract I've been mostly ignoring starts becoming very important indeed. And oh yeah, we're back in that, sure. Because here's the sad thing. Vassals don't get to take advantage of their full diplomatic weight. So all vassals get a reduction of 50%. As the overlord, I don't. Now right now, my vassals can vote however they choose to. However, if I restrict that voting, then all of a sudden, I'm not just bringing my own diplomatic weight to bear, I'm bringing all of theirs too. Meaning, I can sway votes in the galactic community way more easily. And they don't even seem to mind that much. Oh, and speaking of which, guys, 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 guys. So, my lovely friends, the praying mantises, who jumped on board and said, you know what, it's barely even slavery, is it? And we got a university out of it, they're not asking us to do anything, it's just a defensive pact, don't worry about it. Well, now, now they're on board, all right? Maxed out loyalty, going up every turn, they are happy, happy bunnies. But five years have passed, meaning... It's now okay for us to revisit the contract. So, uh, oh guys, I'm afraid I'm altering the arrangements. Like, if I just want more holdings, uh, I can whack them up to four right now. But that is going to mean loyalty is actively going down. That would be a bad decision. At the absolute bare minimum, with the galactic community coming in, yeah, you guys are now voting as I tell you, I'm afraid. Militarily, hold an A defense pact. Holding limit goes up to two, so I get to build a new building. Next one might not be quite so benevolent, shall we say. And uh, they're willing to go for it. But more importantly, their loyalty will hold steady. And there we go. They have accepted the changes with good grace. Ah, okay. I've just learned something interesting here, which is... Uh, Loyalty is not just a function of the contract. These guys come with a bit of bonus loyalty because uh, ethics compatibility, me and them get on super, super well. And uh, subject opinion, we're friends. So they're willing to overlook some of the appalling behavior they're currently suffering. And that brings me therefore to the kingdom of the Barnthorians, who are also up for renegotiation at this point. But now I know what to look out for. These guys, are uh, oh, they love me. They absolutely love me. And now I know I can take advantage of that. You see, if I moved over to, say, three holdings in their territory, officially, that would be unacceptably cruel. Their loyalty would crash, burn, rebellion incoming, sound the alerts. Except, as we've just established, they like me, so they're going to put up with it. And as we've just established, we've now got some spare loyalty sloshing around because these guys like me so much. How about we set down the significantly less positive sounding, though admittedly not as much of a nightmare as it could be, Ministry of Energy. So, all of a sudden, every single technician produces less energy credits for them, but more energy credits for me. I mean, these guys have got eight technicians working on this world. This is going to be beautiful. All right, Galactic Community, here we go. And, uh, oh, absolutely perfect. I am the third most influential player on the Galactic stage right now. And uh, the vast majority of that is technology. But that's not all I'm bringing. Because bear in mind, here's one of my vassals, here's another. Now, their diplomatic weight is down at 50% because they're a subject. But it's still pretty good. 
That's a good 6700, boosting me to almost the most powerful person in the galaxy. Here's what I want though, yes. Cooperative research lets boost the diplomatic weight from technology. So get that out right away. I'll be voting for that. And so will my slaves. It's going to be beautiful. Oh, I think what we're seeing happen here is yes, our former bosses are building a new little vassal empire of their own. Except their vassal empire is built out of themselves, actually. So the Wasari Holy Sovereignty works for the Holy Wasarian Empire. Gotcha, that's not going to be confusing at all. Ah uh, yes, and I'd forgotten to build buildings on my lovely friend Rhino Planet. And this one, okay, now this one's interesting. I do need alloys to build, uh, well, everything really, my new exciting fleet. And uh, here we go, assembly complex. This one is uh, very interesting indeed. So if I send my construction ships round to your planet, that could be worth up to nine alloys a month. That is a lot, actually. That's a really big amount. I mean, the thing is, both my construction ships are just sitting around doing nothing right now, which does generally happen a lot during this game. Very often in the mid-game, there's just nothing for construction ships to do, so this literally gives them a purpose. Oh, and there we go. Alloys jump from 60 to 66 because we are now gaining, yes indeed, six alloys from a holdings. Why? Because I've got two construction ships hanging out right here on this lovely planet with an assembly complex built on it. Oh, I love it. And now I'm starting to think, you see, because that Overlord Garrison, which the Warthogs built on my world back in the day, if you had an ally who really liked you, like a lot, and on top of that, you were to build multiple garrisons, that's probably the point where you can start enforcing taxation, because people do not like being taxed by an overlord. But, if you lined up the buildings right, oh my. Oh, I think they've done it by the way. So yes, the Space Holy Roman Empire has managed to put itself back together. Yeah, the original guys are still in charge, but the war has taken its toll. At this point, these guys are, yes, no stronger than us in any way. And uh, we're friends. We are 100% friends for now. But, 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 but. How about we go and have a nice chat to some of the other people in the Empire? Because some of them want out. Meaning, yes, we've now got secret fealty. I could get them to swear to join me should it come to it. Basically meaning when they decide to pull the trigger and revolt, I'm on board. And if they win their independence war with my assistance, they automatically join me. So independence war probably isn't really the right term anymore, but we are where we are. Although before we get too deep into the, you know, backstabbing murder secret fealty plot, how about me and these guys just... Have a nice chat, because we get on well. And unlike pretty much everybody else around me, they're not hugely behind on tech. Meaning, they can actually be turned into something that's not a protectress. They could turn into all the special stuff. Unfortunately, they hate that. Why? Because that's not really what they're about. They've always had a massive fleet. They were relying on me to do the science. So, if I had to put a guess in, they're potentially interested in becoming a dedicated military specialist. After all, they've got a big fleet that kind of plays into what they want to do anyway. So yes, basically they just become the muscle of the Empire with really, really hard to penetrate borders. And also, shield hit points get doubled for free immediately. Okay, so that is, um, that is amazing. Okay, they only gain these benefits at home. Basically, they're supposed to become an impenetrable wall that nobody else can get past. Interesting. Admirals are better and better too. They just unlock tax for free. They gain daily hold regen, everything. Okay. If you guys would like to be a military specialist, I think I can make that happen. And uh, ah, now it all makes sense. Yes, one of the preconditions of being this lad is he gets given a massive subsidy. 
because his job is to be a military specialist. He's not supposed to be worrying about such unimportant stuff as how do I eat and what does money do. So, right, that's why he's keen to accept this. He's keen to accept this because I'd be paying him a massive subsidy to do it. Okay, let's go back to basics here. Let's talk vassalization, which is he is not that opposed to the idea. I think we could do a deal. Buddy, 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 buddy. You can expand as much as you want to, okay? No trouble there whatsoever. We've got no taxes, we've got no subsidies. I'm willing to share census with you, and uh, I'm willing to give you... There we go. I want to give him a hard and fast commitment that there will be no buildings built on his home world. Now, if he were to ask around, he'd probably learn that I've said that to people before, and then slightly change the terms later. But there's no need to bring that up during this negotiation. The point of this negotiation is, uh, get him on board, promise him the world, alright? Just $4.99 a month for the first 12 months, don't ask what happens when you hit month number 13. I'm also kind of curious what's going to happen to all uh, his subjects, because he was himself an overlord, so... Oh blimey. I just ate all his friends too. Okay, I did, and it would appear to be under the same terms. However, his vassals were so far behind, they've become protectorates by default. Meaning, oh my goodness, every single one of them is worth influence. Oh yeah, up to subject 1.25, thank you very much indeed. Oh, a lot of the map is now looking very hot pink. I'm liking it. Ah yes, that reminds me. Mushroom people, you have got one last chance. No, they're just not willing to be reasonable about this. But you know what? I'm fine with that. After all, I was looking for an opportunity to test these new cruisers. Because uh, I suspect they're going to do rather well. And you know what, buddy? You don't get to be a vassal. Vassal is too good for you these days. Because you refuse to play ball, that means you get to be a tributary. So, congratulations, you've talked yourself into paying tax. Oh, bless them. I think their fleet has decided to uh, come and meet us and... Uh, oh, guys. Oh, their poor, poor, sad, technologically inferior fleets. Oh, the cruiser. The cruiser is huge and it is beautiful and they can't get through our shields. They cannot get through our beautiful, ridiculously strong tier 5 shields. This is just... Oh, this is sad. This is so sad. They're just being shredded. There is not a thing they can do. They can't even warp out in time. It's just, oh, this is the power. The power of spending a few decades as a Scalarium. I am now just decades, maybe centuries ahead of my nearest neighbors. And as soon as our fleet reached their capital, they decided no. We are not going to accept our people being bombed. We're going to surrender before a single shot is fired. And you know what, guys? I respect you for that. Good decision. Okay, now I'll admit, we may have expanded a little bit... A little bit quickly on this occasion. And in particular, added a whole bunch of empires who don't actually like us that much. Okay, we need to sort this out here. Subject opinion is becoming a problem. Lads, 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 lads. Don't worry, we've got diplomats. We're going to send them over right now to make you chill out a bit. And as for you guys, well, you're probably going to rebel at some point. And when you do, I'll be sending the fleet back over to bomb you some more. But in the meantime, you'll be paying me... Oh my, that is... That's a nice, sexy tax right there. Ah, yes, though, speaking of tax. Okay, I was thinking about this. Guys... Guys, 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 my lovely rhino friends who adore me so, so much. Right now I've got a building slot I'm not even using on your planet. I'm willing to negotiate that away. I'm willing to take that back. You're very welcome, but, 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 but. How about, in return, 15% tax, they'd be willing to go for it. Meaning if we just keep an eye on uh, my numbers up top as the month ticks over. Oh my. So I would say that's now, yes, a very significant pocket of the universe.
coloured as I would like it to be coloured, I have built an empire so, so much larger and stronger and richer than the one I emerged from and uh, I would say I think you get the point. This is a game changer because the new mechanics aren't precisely what I was expecting. Like, okay, absolutely, if you want to just try and play tall or do vassal only runs, uh, that's an option available to you. But the tools that this adds are really generally useful. This, I think, could be one of the biggest and most interesting updates for some time. So, okay, watch this space because I would not rule out cracking out a challenge run at some point. This has just added a lot to the game. Lots for me to think about and I would say lots to check out too. So, link to Solaris in the description down below. I love this game, and I love that it just keeps getting better and flipping better. Long may that continue, but in the meantime, I've been John, this has been many a true nerd, and this has been Stellaris with the brand new Overlord expansion. Thank you very much, and goodbye. This here, this is the face of death, okay? This is what my sudden death looks like. Do not engage before we arrive. Do not engage. What are you doing? I specifically said don't. Oh, no. No, John. <laughs> oh, he likes that. <laughs> the Romans touched me. <laughs>